Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to honor the name of the Most High God for this wonderful opportunity to come your way this evening, bringing before you again our usual topic, set to Saul. Welcome to the platform. I believe God is going to be a great time in his presence because we are going to learn things that will help us tremendously in every area of life tonight. Tonight. Welcome. And I want you to do me a favor. Reach out and invite as many as possible to join us on the platform to hear this wonderful revelation, this wonderful mysteries unveiled here tonight that I believe is going to bless families because this platform is about building families and thereby building societies. So make sure you are inviting as many as possible to be part of the program. Invite from anywhere in the world, as long as there's internet there, they will be blessed. They're going to be blessed tremendously. Today, in our program, Set to Saw, we choose to look at a topic that we call mental. 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 Actually, we're going to be talking about men. We're going to be talking about men. So men then talk. <laughs> Glory be to God. So we choose this topic because of what mentoring is all about. What mentoring is all about. The basic definition for a mentor is a wise and trusted guide and advisor. A mentor is a wise and trusted guide and advisor. So you can see this definition perfectly fits the purpose of God for man. The purpose of God for man, it perfectly fits it. That's exactly what God designed man to do, to be a mentor, to be a mentor. You know, look at what the Bible says. We want to just look at the scriptures to have a background before we go into the discussion. You know, the Bible said, you know, in the garden, God formed man from the dust of the earth, breathed into his nostrils himself, as the God put part of him into man. A man became a living soul, a living soul. So God did not leave man just like that. He created the man, but did not abandon him. No. The Bible says he planted a garden in the east of Eden. And there he put the man he has made to dress it, to keep it, to dress it, to dress it. Some translations say to cultivate it to cultivate. You can see that one in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, that's where the verse of scripture is. To cultivate it. That's the, to cultivate. Cultivating, to cultivate a thing. I like the word cultivate. It's talking about, you know, to educate, to school, to train, or to civilize. You can see cultivating. God put the man there to cultivate the garden. So you can see that from what we know of cultivation now, what it means about cultivating the thing, to teach, to train, to school, to civilize. So it's not just talking about the vegetation. It's not about the vegetation. So God is simply talking about entrusting Adam with all he has made for him to cultivate them. That is to school them, to educate them in the ways of God. That is to be a mentor to them, to be a wise and trusted guide and advisor to everything that he has made. And you agree with me that the first thing that God did in scripture for, to, you, to, to, to show you that it's not just about the vegetation is that he brought all the animals he created, all the animals created before Adam, you know, to see what he would call them. And the Bible says, whatever name Adam called them, God approved it. God didn't change it. So look at it. He started cultivating. He started cultivating. He called them names based on what they look like, based on what they will do. So it's a, it's a life of purpose. The purpose is to mentor all the things that God has made to mentor. 
So you can see, invariably, God gives to man the responsibility of mentoring his creatures, the things he has made, that responsibility. And that responsibility was to start with the first offspring of Adam, which is Eve, because Eve was taken out of Adam. That's the first offspring, which is Eve. So God expected Adam to mentor Eve, to show him the way to teach him. So first of all, let me show you what mentoring is from scriptures, you know, so that we have the understanding about that word mentor, because at times people misuse the word mentoring. I'm a mentor, I have a mentor, mentor. They don't understand what mentoring is all about. Praise God. You know, we look at Psalm 32, verse 8. I want to read the Living Bible, Living Bible. Say, I will instruct you, says the Lord, and guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch your progress. That's mentoring. Simply defined as mentoring. I will instruct you. A mentor instructs. A mentor guides. A mentor guides along the pathway of life. A mentor also advises. And a mentor watch your progress to see whether you are doing exactly what he has taught you. A mentor. God, say it here, God is the greatest mentor. He said, I may do it in my image, out of my likeness. This is exactly what I want you to do. To instruct your wife, show her what I have told you. Remember that, you know, God has already given every instruction to Adam before he was made. So it's one of the two of them he gave the instruction to. He gave it to Adam, trusting that Adam will pass it over to those that are coming after him to show them appropriately, adequately, to show them intimately, to show them, you know, thoroughly what God has said to him so they will not miss it. It's not, it's not just to instruct them, not just to show them, but to also guide them. Make sure he's providing the guidance to make sure they do it and what their progress in doing it. You can see, it's a sequence. It's a sequence. That's, what, that's the purpose of man. That's the purpose that God made man to fulfill here on earth, to represent him adequately as a mentor, to show other things what he has shown them. So, which means what we are talking about here is that it's somebody, a man has to be intentional about this affair, intentional. It's not something he is wishing. It's not something he can delegate to others. It has to be his sole responsibility. Mentoring must be his sole responsibility. As we see in scriptures, you know, that the Bible says that God was proud of a man, Adam. Abraham, rather. Not Adam, Abraham. Look at what the Bible says about him. And the Lord said, Genesis chapter 18, verse 17, Shall I have from Abraham that in which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? Look at verse 19. That's where we're going about mentoring. For I know him. God, may God know you. <laughs> For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. That Abraham is a good mentor. Abraham is able to mentor his children, his, 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 his household, in the fear of the Lord, showing them the way, guiding them, watching their progress. Abraham did that. And God said, he's his friend. He cannot hide anything from him. You can see what mentoring entails what mentoring entails. That is the purpose of God for man. Nothing outside that. That is the purpose of God for man. But we can see that over the time, man has replaced the purpose of God for roles. Man just keep playing roles. I'm supposed to be doing this. Supposed to be breadwinner. Supposed to be doing this. And when the role shifted, man got lost. Because he forsook purpose for roles. When the role shifted, man got lost. <laughs> for example, man thought He's supposed to be the breadwinner for the house. But today, women also work. So he's not the sole winner. He's not the sole breadwinner of the house. So he doesn't know where he belongs, <laughs> whether he's the, owner, the one in charge or the woman in charge. So Rose, mistaken for purpose, had problem to the household. You know? But God wanted man to be solely responsible in showing his plans to generation after him. 
teaching them the way, guiding them through, and working their progress. That's the purpose of God for man. For man. Today, that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be talking about that here with me. Uh, wonderful men of God, women of God, all anointed, <laughs> glory be to God, and they are filled with the wisdom of God. I know they happen to be leaders of the Salem men, hmm? the mighty men of valor. So we also have women, because women have men. So they need to let us know what it is that men should be doing that men are not doing. So here today with me to discuss this wonderful topic, mentor, talking about men, what men should do to build a society, is far on my far left, Reverend Oriola Olapade. He happened to be resident pastor in the church and also an accomplished businessman. Please, you are welcome to the platform this evening. Thank you for having me. Sir. God bless you. Sitting to his right is the precious wife, Reverend Abby Olapade. So she's an accomplished investment banker. So she's here today to be a blessing. You are welcome to the platform. Thank you very much, sir. Amen. And to my left is my co-host, my precious wife. You're looking wonderful today with her red dress, telling the devil he has no choice here but to give away. So men be excited because my wife has wore a coat of judgment. <laughs> You're welcome, baby. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> to my far right is <clears throat> Pastor Clement Molumba. Pastor Clement Molumba is an anointed man of God. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a trainer, he's a teacher, he's a coach, and I believe God that the wisdom of God in him will show here today. You are welcome to the platform, Pastor Clement. Thank you, Bishop. Praise God. And to my immediate right is Pastor Prince Made, Made, the bespoke man. <laughs> he's an accomplished businessman. He's a good consultant. Glory be to God. You are welcome to the platform. God bless you. Praise God. So I also want to welcome you again, all of you, to the platform also. Come on, give the Lord a hand for yourself, wherever you are working from. Give the Lord a hand for yourself. It's going to be a precious time here today to the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You see, from what you have just, you know, I mean, heard, to be a mentor, you must first of all be mentored. You know? Adam was mentored by God before he was supposed to be a mentor. You know? The Bible even tells us, he tell in Deuteronomy chapter 6, he said, This word of the Lord should be in your heart first. Then you should teach it. I say, if you are going to mentor, somebody, you must be mentored first. The problem today is that men are not mentored, but they want to mentor others. It become a problem. Everybody, what do you see regarding this? Praise, praise the Lord. Um, this is as a result of where the society is at the moment. Um, when we look at the scripture, the Bible clearly tells us that God made man in his own image after his true likeness. So men are made for the glory of God. But when we cut ourselves off from God, when we think that we know more than our creator or more than those who have been before us, we lose everything. This happened to Adam as well. When Adam was cast out sir, from the garden and there was a curse on him, we can see what happened afterwards. That his own children, Cain and Abel, Cain killed his brother. 
So when there is a break of relationship between the mentee and the mentor, this is what tends to happen. And I think if we are as men to be what God has created us to be, we know we have to go back to the beginning. Because God has placed leaders, people who are mentors. It's not how much a person owns in his account or how much you have achieved. That should be a condition to be for you to be a mentor, a mentee. Is to see the grace of God upon the life of that person. And I think this is where we men, we have to look back and go back to the beginning. Praise the Lord, sir. Amen. Essentially, what you are talking about is that men need to be humble. That that's is true, sir. That's it. You need to be humble. They're humble to know that you must learn. You need to learn from somebody. You cannot be an island to yourself. We are all made for connection. We need to be humble enough to realize that there is somebody who knows what you don't know and be willing to learn from that person, from that person. You know, I think, you know, this is where the whole matter lies. You know, when we're not willing to be taught, how can you teach others? Only those who are trained can lead the trade. You know, only those who are trained can lead the trade. You must be willing to be trained before you lead the trade. Otherwise, you go to cause accident. <laughs> cause accident, you know. So I believe God that everyone should come to realize that we are to be, we are to be mentored, you know, to be mentored. Abraham learned from God, then he passed it to his generation. We need to learn from someone. Praise God. Amen. So how far is that true, Pastor Clement? Um, it's very, very true. Um, the Bible says also that Jesus, while he's speaking to his disciples, he says, what you see me do is only what I've seen my father do. So he also was taught. So he didn't move on his own will, but he moved according to the father's will. And I really want to touch a bit on image. I believe most of the time we lose the vision of the image, how the image is supposed to look like or represent. The only time as man when we have the authority or power when we chase after God's likeness, I think we forget that he's his character that gives us access or gives us the authority to the key that man can't open. So we tend to move away from his image and try and create our own image. And that's where the insecurity and the fear and the pride and the ego comes in because you want to do things on your own, you know. And I want to also add on something um, about the mentor. You can also learn outside of your father's, um, your father's presence. And when I mean your father's presence, there's some, there's some men that I speak to that I know they don't have fathers and they struggle to accept instructions. But just because you didn't have a father shouldn't stop you from receiving instructions. And there are people that are placed in our life, in our, in our road, in our path that we're walking that are called destiny helpers. And most of the time, when you come across them, you just know. You know when you know. Like the way I've met you, Bishop, for example. I didn't argue when you asked me to do things. It was just like, I just know, you just know. You can't explain it, you just know. There was like a natural chemistry. And because I was able to, I'm able to follow the instructions, what you give, it was easier for me to also follow when Reverend Ori speaking or Reverend Okoji speaking, because I come also, I come from a place where there's authority, so I know how to kind of obey that, but I know there's men that also struggle with that, you know, and it makes it easy when you're able to allow yourself to be teachable, because then you can teach others, because it's your lifestyle, you're representing God, and I think we forget that we're actually here on earth to represent God. You know, I always told my kids, when you go outside, look like and behave like you have parents. So when people look at you, they can say, you have parents. So that means dress appropriate, speak appropriate, the way you carry yourself, because you're not just representing yourself, you're representing me and, the, and everyone else in the house. You know, so there's an image we have to carry, and that image most of the time is God's image, but we've, we tend to forget that, because based on today's society, the expectation of what manhood is supposed to look like. 
Thank you so much. You know, you just uh, said something that I believe that we need to possibly look into, you know. So many people find it difficult to accept mentorship because they don't have the upbringing along that line, you know. So for example, we know that everyone's mentor is supposed to be the father. The father is to, the father is to mentor the children. That is what's supposed to be. The father is supposed to mentor the children, you know, to show them the word of the Lord. So when that is lacking, some people find it difficult to accept some, another person, you know, to mentor him or to mentor her, you know. So Pastor Prince, what, how can you comment on that? What advice do you have people, for people who fall into this category, who yes, find it difficult to okay. accept mentorship from another person who is not their biological father? Uh, I definitely fall into that category, sir. So, because, and I've spoken to young men that also fell into that category simply because they believe somebody who maybe they believe is their father figure wasn't there to really give them or build that foundational part of them in terms of trust and authorities, believing authorities, and being able to take them through that journey of trust. So by the time maybe a mentor or, or somebody who's there to really guide them come into it, they've developed habits or they've been told this is the way to do it, either through society, either through media or whatever it is that when somebody then come in, it's the case of why should I listen to you because you're probably going to leave anyway. So everything you're saying, I'm going to counter it with is temporary. So I might as well learn from things like social media or people that gratify and give me immediate results that will satisfy that hole that's been left behind, even though it might not be to, I don't know, how do I have to put this, to a uh, long-term, uh, 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 something that will be good for me. And I think using myself as an example, when I came across Bishop, it took me a while to really get closer to Bishop. And it wasn't the case of, I was rebelling against the authority or I wasn't respecting Bishop, but I was, I was studying his behavior and his mannerism before I can commit myself under the mentorship, if that makes sense. Because I've looked at maybe men or guys in my life and I'm thinking, you're only relating based on transactional relationship. And I feel like a lot of young men have maybe men in their life that's transactional relationship. You do this, I do this. You do this, I do this. So it's very difficult to now come across somebody that's going to put your hand on your shoulder and say, I'm going to love you regardless of your nature. And I'm going to take you through this journey regardless of what you've been through. And I'm not going to judge you for it. So when we hear that as young men, we're thinking that is not natural. So it's not the case of men are rebelling from mentorship. It's not that, like Pastor Clement said, is I do what I see my father do. But they've not seen somebody love them unconditionally. So it takes them a while to really come on that, that mentorship and believe that you have my best interest at heart at the end of this. I don't know if that, that answers the question. Yeah, yeah that, that, that is great, you know. That is great. That is great. That is great. So I think it's a great advice to anyone hearing us here, possibly who falls into that same category, where you were not properly mentored by your biological father, you felt lost, you felt isolated, you know, you felt like you are nobody. You know? But I want to tell you that God is now trusting you to make that change, to make that change, to be the one that will create a change in the family lineage, to be the one that will turn the ties around. So you open up your heart to, first of all, allow God to mentor you, then submit to those men in authority who has placed over you to also mentor you. And discover that, you know, life is worthy. Discover that you can live out God's purpose for your life and be a blessing to a generation. It's very possible because that is the purpose of God for you. That one person fail doesn't mean everyone will fail. You know, everyone will fail. You know, God's design is that when one man fails, another person will take over and make a success out of it. So you shall be that link that will create that success in your, in, your, in, your, in your family lineage. So rise up today, take up the challenge. Get to understand that God has a purpose for your life, and that is mentoring the next generation. 
Glory be to God. So I want to you know, ask you, when I've been a lady here on the platform, you know, from the lady's perspective, what do you think, you know, lady desire to see in men? What is it the roles they perform or this responsibility they carry? You know, so what is it that women really desire to see their men, the men in their life, you know, go about doing? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, thank you very much for that question, Bishop. Um, I think I will start by answering this question from the perspective of a female who did not have her father around when she was growing up. Yeah. And um, I really like the definition and description that you gave Bishop about you know, the, the, the role of a man being there to mentor his household. Um, and I guess by definition as, you know, not having a father around when I was growing up, I guess I didn't really have that mentorship. Um, so as a result, I mean, I, I believe I haven't suffered from it because, um, you know, I've grown up to be a strong woman and perhaps before I got married, I was too strong. Um, but I think, you know, I think for any female, regardless of their age, they're first of all looking for that father figure to, to be that mentor, as you've described, to, to show them, um, you know, what to expect from a man um, and to show them the way. Yeah. Um, and of course, following on from that, um, you know, as, as a female grows up, she then marries. Um, and in a lot of ways, what she has seen growing up from her father and, or from her father figures um, determines what she um, expects from her husband. Um, but I think ultimately, from a female perspective, um, you know, we're just looking for leadership in a sense. We're looking for direction and we're looking for protection. I mean, the Bible does say that, you know, the husband is, is the head of the wife. Um, and so, you know, from, from a wife's perspective, we're really looking for our husbands to be that head for us. Um, we're not, you know, obviously looking for them to suppress us in any form, shape or form. Um, but we're just looking for them to, you know, provide that strength um, of character, that leadership um, in the home and direction um, and protection, really. Praise God. As, as powerful. I believe that, you know, men are listening, <laughs> listening. You know, because women have just spoken. That's what they are looking for. Looking out for a good leader, a man who will mentor them. You know, like Adam was supposed to mentor Eve, you know, a man who will mentor them. You know, unfortunately, Adam failed in providing good mentoring to Eve. Because, you see, as we look at, you know, the, 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 the characteristics of a mentor, a mentor is not just to instruct, it's there to guide, to guide, to advise, and to work the progress, work the men mentee, Maintains progress, you know. So you can see that Adam failed in providing mentoring to Eve, because when he plucked the fruit and brought it to him, he would have said, "The Lord said we should not eat that fruit. Throw it away." <laughs> he was not there to guide her when the enemy was tormenting her mind and harassing her mind. She was not there to guide. God said, "I will not just instruct you; I will also guide you." That is, my eyes will be watching over you, I will guide you. So you can see the definition from scripture of a mentor, a mentor. So Reverend Ori, based on this, can a man, you know, just keep on, you know, possibly, uh, you know, just executing or discharging the roles of a man and at the same time fulfill the purpose of God for his life? You know, can, can, the two, can the two work hand in hand? Um, it's possible, sir, to, for the two to work hand in hand, but the most important thing is to do what God, to me, to do what God has, is expecting from a man. 
Because when we serve the Lord, when we have that love for the Lord, it becomes very easy to take care of our family, to provide the care. You have just mentioned about um, Adam and Eve, and that is the core thing here. Um, when God created Adam and Eve, there was nobody to compete with Adam about love. So we talk too much about loving your partner whatsoever. But the key thing is the care. To have an affection, to care for your wife, to care for your environment, to care for your own children. In my own view, I believe that if Adam had taken good care of Eve, Eve would not, Eve would, Eve would not have eaten that fruit. But the problem that we have in this day and age is men, we always believe that I'm the breadwinner, I have to do everything at the expense of taking care of your own. When you are not there, there are other things engaging with your own, with your wife, with your children. And if you lose that, no matter what you have achieved in life, it's just you have disappointed God because God actually expects you as a man, as a man to take care, like Bishop Bradley said, and the scripture says, God created that garden for Adam to till, to take care of. But if Adam had faced one particular thing without taking care of that, the other things would be in a mess. So it would not fulfill his purpose that God created him for. So the key thing here for me is that my relationship with God will fuel my commitment to the society, to my family. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's that will be my... That's great. That's essentially what we're talking about, that you cannot mentor somebody without spending time with the person. Without spending time with the person. Because the problem we have is that the man is too busy. He's running everywhere. He's busy doing so many things, which he, believe, which he, thinks, he thinks are his roles to perform. The roles to perform. But forsaking the purpose for his existence, which is mentoring. So not having time with people is, 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 is the problem here. Because you cannot mentor somebody you don't spend time with. Because mentoring, like we say, involves instructing the people. How are you going to teach somebody if you don't spend time with the person? Number two, guide the person. You are saying, I have gone the way before, follow me. So that guide means, follow me, do as I'm doing. So there are three stages here of instruction. First of all, you tell them what to do. The next thing, you help them do it. Then you now watch them do it. You know, so you see, you are making the person to know now how to do it. You teach the person how to do it. You work the person, do it. Then, sorry, you help them, you do it together, you know, so that they can see how it is done. Then you now work them, do it. In that way, you are able to pass the instruction to the person, you know. So before we go into, you know, is it easy to, you know, mentor somebody without spending time with the person? There is a question here. I think there's a question that's coming. Can you ask the question, honey? Praise the Lord. The question here says, how do these men who Pastor Prince was referring to, I mean, the person was talking, I think this person is referring to um, the fact that being mentored, finding it difficult to get a mentor or finding it difficult to submit to mentorship, was referring to locate men they can open up to and trust so they can be mentored. So how do these men you know, locate men they can open up to and trust so they can be mentored. Um, go ahead, um, uh, um, in my case, for glory to God, we have someone like um, Bishop here that allocated man in church, amen, um, not only through, um, you know, sometimes we get carried away by people, maybe through their preaching and we see the public appearance of them, but it's actually by observing their lifestyle and also how they relate to other people. And I think so, how to locate them, first of all, is submit to a man of God who fears God and walk in the ways of God. 
so that when they give you advice, it will come from the presence of God rather than based on what society thinks they should be saying. And also, not only that, they serve under them. And I know this generation would like to be told to do, give, some, give some instruction, but actually observe their lifestyle, serve under them by actually doing what they ask you to do, by following instructions and commit yourself also to it to know that you are ready for that change because it's going to be a bumpy ride. And I think those are the two key things. Men that follow after God and glory to God for mine, I'm able to find someone like Bishop in the house of God and also um, commit yourself to that journey because they might not chase after you. So if they don't call you on Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever day it is, don't get easily offended. You need actually to make the effort to build that bridge between you and that individual. Um, so I would say look for men of God in the house of God. That's what I would say. But it depends on what kind of mentorship they're looking for that. It could be spiritual mentorship, finance mentorship, career mentorship. You know, there's so many other type of roles. But I'm just focusing on the spiritual side of things and life in general. Yeah, that is uh, what you are focusing on here today. So like he said, the foundation is, first of all, submit to God's own mentorship. So you need to be born again, submit to God's own mentorship. When you have God as your mentor, it becomes easy for you to submit to another man authority to mentor you. It's very easy. The reason why we find it difficult to submit to another man to mentor us is because we've not submitted to God's mentorship. We don't submit to God's authority yet. We are still living our life the way we want to live it, you know. It is nobody who is not born again and totally submitted to God can be humble. And it takes humility to be mentored, you know. It takes humility to be mentored. So, Pastor Clement, I want us to look at how, what would the young people do to avoid going to the wrong source of mentor, mentoring? Because it's very easy to have false family out there. It's very easy for people to get carried away by false family that will promise you they're going to protect you, they're going to defend, they're going to do all this to you. And they make you look big in society where you are looked down on, you know? So today, you have people sold to crime and other things. Why? Because there are false family out there promising them mentorship, you know? And they will run away from what God ordained to be a blessing in their life to what the enemy have put in to destroy them. So how can young people avoid going to the wrong places? from mental, mental. Um, Thank you for that question. It's a very good question. Um, first of all, I'm a product of um, a child that was, um, how can I say it? Um, my father didn't spend much time with me. You know, you spoke about that. I think it was Reverend Ori or Bishop. Um, didn't spend time with me. So he didn't get, he didn't get to know me. So whenever um, I saw him or met up with him in the house, in the corridor, or the living room, he was either he's giving me instructions or telling me what I was doing that was wrong. So because of that, see, when I was a child, it was easy. As a toddler, it's easy. As a young teenager, it's easy. He can get away with that. But when I'm turning to a young man, it's difficult for you to do that now. Because the love that I've seek, I was seeking for, or expecting, was no longer there. When now I'm able to go outside, what's happening outside, I'm being embraced outside. I've been celebrated outside. And when I'm not celebrated at home, where I'm supposed to be celebrated and feel loved, if I'm not feeling that, but I'm feeling it from outside, it's easy for me to fall under the force of bad habits, hanging around with friends that would encourage you to do wrong things, having elders that will teach you how to do wrong things. Um, my mentors were teaching me how to wipe off a gun, how to clean a gun, how to put the bullets. These are the things that I was going through. When I'm coming home, my father is telling me to go and clean the carpet or to go and do homeworks. There was no time for homework. I was no longer a young man. I was a gang member. So he didn't realize because the person he's talking to, he's thinking I'm being rebellion, but it's just that you've left the door open. And some parents, what I found, especially fathers, uh, I'll say typical African fathers, they don't know how to own up to things. Adam didn't own up to his mistakes. He didn't own up. God gave him a chance and said, 
who told you you're naked? The first thing he said, the woman you gave me made me do this. He blamed, he didn't own up. So the, the many fact that he could hear God speaking to him during that time shows that God had mercy still on him. He was given opportunity for him to own up to his mistakes. And what my father did, he never owned up, he blamed a lot. And that turned to anger. So I was doing boxing, kickboxing, cage fighting. I was doing anything that I can, I can destroy someone. But really, I was angry at him. Now, because of that, outside, they were celebrating me now. They were cheering me on. You know, we all see the story of Mike Tyson, the great boxer, but there's a reason why he's the way he is. He didn't choose to be Iron Mike. He, was, he became Iron Man because he was rejected. He wasn't cultivated the way how he was supposed to be cultivated. You know, he wasn't a people fighter like the way Muhammad Ali was. He was battling with his own demons in his head because they were chasing him from the time when his mother left him open. And I believe fathers really need to step up, you know. If he, fathers, to me, is like a door. If you don't have a door or a house, anyone can walk into that house. And if one can come in that house and make themselves comfortable in that house. But when you have a solid door, it doesn't matter what weather, what kind of conditions happening, no one can come in. That's why they call it you have security doors. When you're a father, you need to be protector. You know, you need to be there for your children. And your children need to feel loved, really loved. Like, the, what, how I am with my children, my father sees that. He's even learning from that. Because he sees the way I love my children. I will take care of them and they know daddy's here. And when I come in, you can see the joy in their face. When my father used to come in, we used to run away. But when I'm coming in, my children are running towards me. And he sees that. You know, and thank God for Jesus because I forgave him. We're nice. We get on now. We're really good friends. And we're also, he's, he's, he's a fantastic dad. You know, he, he, he understands. He's not so stuck up, but he's really, he understands situations and um, reality. But again, to answer that question, is for, I think for fathers need to really be there for their, for, for their kids. That's the only way the kids go outside. When you're also allowing your child to grow, that teach him responsibility by you being also responsible. When you teach him that responsibility and encourage him to make good decisions on his own, not with you there, it's not about your child be making a good decision because you're there. He needs to be in a place where he can make good decision because knowing that good is good, not because good is because father said good is good, but he needs to recognize that. So that means the child also needs to have his own relationship with God. That's why it's very important to bring kids in a godly environment so they also can have their own relationship with God. So when they're outside, they're able to discern between evil and good, evil and good, so they can make the good decision. So it all comes down to what a father does. If the doors open, anyone can, anyone can mentor your kid. But I exchanged my father for carrying guns and knives and stuff like that because he left the door open and he, wasn't in response, he was not in the house enough. He didn't spend time with me. I don't remember my father coming to my football games or um, telling me I'm good at something. The first time my father told me I was, he was proud of me on my wedding day and he cried because I gave him such a nice speech about him. He didn't expect that. Because I, I can see what he was doing, and I can tell he wasn't doing it on purpose. He was only repeating what he saw his father do. Again, it goes back to the Bible. I'm only doing what I'm doing here. You can see it's, my, it's only through my father. So Jesus is seeing his father doing what he's doing. He's doing the same thing, which is love. And he saw his father being a certain way. He was out of the house most of the time. He would come back midnight when we're sleeping. So when you're now speaking to me, telling me what to do, all I'm thinking is, well, I'm not good enough. So what that does, it births rejection. And rejection can turn to anger or insecurity, whichever way you want to take it. Unfortunately for me at that time, it turned to anger. And the anger was embraced outside. Hallelujah. So you see, men, we have responsibility, great responsibility to be a mentor, to deceive from our bodies. We have great responsibility. Like I said, it's something you cannot delegate. 
you have to be intentional about it. Look at what you've just heard from this young man. The father opened the door for the enemy to come in. Why? Because the right atmosphere was not there for him to grow in, in the house. The father did not provide the right atmosphere, the conducive atmosphere. The atmosphere of training. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, verse 16, it says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he grow up, he shall not depart from it. So mentoring requires spending time with the, 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 your seed, your household, your children. Mentoring requires you spend time with them. Look at the scripture. God, the greatest mentor. The Bible says in chapter 3 of the book of Genesis, and Adam had the voice of God walking in the garden as usual, which means God was coming to spend time with Adam, to instruct him, to show him what to do. So God was spending time with him. So we cannot mentor our household. We cannot mentor even our wives if we don't spend all this time with them. We cannot mentor our children if we don't spend time with them. I know. Since mentoring involves instruction, so we are to spend time with our children, teaching them from the word of God what life is all about, showing them scriptural example of how to live a godly life, pointing them to men that have lived godly and the reward. Want them also to the one that live on godly life and the reward. They need, that's why the Bible is a complete book. We need to spend time with them, we need to give them assignment, books to read, you know, that will help them to grow in the image of God. Books, we have to recommend books to them to read and make sure they read it by the money that they write summary of what they've read and give to you so you can go through it. That is guiding them. You are now guiding them. Guiding them. Then you are working their progress as you begin to commit assignment to their hand. You can tell them, leave prayers in the house fellowship. Teach us the word today. Share the word today because essentially you want to make sure they matured into a godly adult. You know, so you are not opening the door for the enemy to come in. So you see, this is responsibility that you cannot delegate to any other person. You have to do it. But you see that quite often men are too busy. You see, I have said it over and over again. No man who is dying ever said, can you bring that uh, Lamborghini? that big car, that precious car, or can you bring that golden crystal, can you bring that house? No. It's can you bring my family around me, I'm about to go. I know. Or the regret of many people passing away is, I wish I had spent more time with my children. I wish I have invested more in them. I don't want you to regret in life. It is time to sit up and begin to provide what God expects you to provide for your family, mentorship. Mentor every child of yours so you can build a good family. For when you have a good family, you have a good society. When you have a good society, you have a good community. When you have a good community, you have good county. A good, good county will result to a good nation. So you can see you can transform the, 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 the whole world today by every man choosing to do the right thing. Do the right thing mentoring their offspring, which is our responsibility, which is the purpose of God for our lives. Leave the roles out. Roles can change, but purpose never change. Purpose will remain the same. Roles can change. For example, roles are changing now. Women are working like men are working. So what is it? <laughs> Women can buy food. Women don't need you to have security. They can call police. If somebody harass them, they call policemen. So they don't need you to come and fight anybody. <laughs> if they can't break down the way they call, uh, you know, car, what do they call them? <laughs> hey, hey. So they don't need you to come and fix the car. Somebody can fix the car for them. So you can discover that if you still stress on rules, you become irrelevant. You know, relevant. But when you stay on purpose, you'll be very relevant to your household. Stay on purpose. So let me ask you, Reverend Ori, how can young men, therefore, be attracted to receive mentoring from the older ones? Thank you, sir. Since, you know, we can say Paul mentored Timothy. Yes. And he said to Timothy to also mentor those who are going to come. Just keep on passing, passing the ball, keep on passing the baton to others, you know. So how do older ones attract the younger ones to receive mentoring? Especially for those, like the question that came in, 
for those who possibly did not have a proper mentoring, you know, from youth. Thank you, sir. Um, from what um, Pastor Clement said about his relationship with his dad, uh, my own case is a bit different from that. Um, I grew up without my mom, and um, uh, that tells you what kind of a father I have, a very loving father, a very caring father. But as you continue to grow up and um, you see the way your dad, without knowing God, try to bring you up, you will discover that it may not be according to how God planned it to be when you have friends who are brought up properly in a Christian home. So for one of the things that I personally look forward to, apart from for a mentor is a, a God-fearing person. And secondly, this is key to me, and it may be key to anyone here, is I need to know the history. It's not the final product that I'm after. I want to understand the journey that that mentor has gone through. And when you look at the scripture from Abraham to David to Paul himself, you will understand that they have history behind them. What their relationship with God has been. How they have trusted God. How they have dealt with God. With situations around them. And how they have come out being what they are. So when a young man is looking for a mentor. You know, anyone can stand behind the altar and say the good things that you want to hear, and, but look into their own life. Look at what they have achieved, where they have been to, how they have trusted God in situations that, you know, like the Bible says that Abraham believed in hope, you know, had this hope upon hope. You want to have a person that will mentor you that when you are, what you are expecting is not what you are getting, that you keep trusting God, no matter what has happened. Praise God. So, um, when I joined Salem, this was some years back, and I met my bishop, the first thing I realized that this is a man of God, before I come under him, I studied him. I listened to his own testimony. How he had been able to go around the bend, trusting God, and getting to where he is. And at that point, I realized that this is a man for me to follow, that I should be mentored by this man. So, I've been under many pastors, I've been to many churches, I've had, I mean, many of us have mentors, TV evangelists, TV pastors that we don't even know their story. They talk big, they do everything. But when it comes to the crunch, would they be able to stand and back you up and hold you by your shoulder and say, keep going? That the God who has done this for me, like David said, when he was asked to go and face Goliath, he made a reference that this same God, I mean, the, me, myself, I have taken lions, I have taken bears by my hand, and who is this Philistine that I will not be able to pull down? You want people like that to give you that encouragement. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's true. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think there are questions there you want to ask for me. Praise the Lord. I've got a question here for Pastor Clement. What advice would you give to someone who's who in a similar situation like when you were growing up and they are finding it difficult to get proper advice to grow up with, like get a proper mentor? Um, you need to thank Jesus for yourself, first and foremost. I hope that um, you, attend to, you have a local church. And if it's someone that's in our church in Salem, you start off with a bishop, you express 
you know, most of the time men don't like to express. I know Pastor Chris, you can testify. Men don't always like to express because sometimes it looks like a weakness, but it's not a strength. <laughs> so you need to find um, a place where you can have a guy, first of all, a friend that you can speak to, that you can relate to without judgment. Pastor Prince touched on it earlier on judgment. I think that's what it is with most men. They don't want to feel like you're judging them because they really want to express realistically, but it stops. what stops them from expressing when they feel like they've been judged or looked down on. And some men find their heart like to cry, which there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I cried at my wedding, you know? I, <laughs> I do cry when things, mean, when stuff touch my heart, I cry because I never, I never seen my father express things like that. You know, and these are things that you learn also as a young man. But overall, how do you find good men? Is when you attend a local church, a church where you know there's God in it, where there's Jesus in it, where they're practicing Holy Spirit, when they're living according to the Spirit. That's first and foremost. When you find that, please attend men's fellowship. Do not neglect it. Attend men's fellowship is so important because there's so much things that you, that discuss, that, that's been discussed in the men's fellowship that you will not hear it maybe at the altar on a Sunday, but you hear on a Wednesday, or on a Thursday, or on a Friday, or in the morning, like when Bishop shares the morning session with us, um, um, once in a blue moon, you'll have a time with just the men, and we'll be talking, not preaching, just having a conversation with us, speaking and sharing his, his experience, and, and he will give a platform to other men, um, like Reverend Henry, to, to share his experience. And when you're hearing that, it makes you realize you're not alone. One thing we all we think we all think we're the we're the only one going through what we're going through. It's a lie. That's what the enemy does. He wants to make you feel like you are on your own. And when you feel like you're on your own, it makes you feel like you're crazy. You're talking to yourself. You see, no one cares. No one can't hear you. They can hear you. Just don't believe in his lie. That's why it's key to have the word of God in you, because then you know that it's the Holy Spirit. Speak when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You know it's the Holy Spirit. When the devil is trying to speak to you, you know that no, Lucifer, I'm not having a conversation with you. Sometimes we entertain him too much. We have to switch the channel and change it and get back to where we're supposed to be. So how being around other men, godly men, not just any man, there's a difference between being a good man and a righteous man. So be around men that are righteous because a good man can still tell you, you can go and smoke, but you can give your offering so God will understand. No. Be around men that are righteous, men that practice righteousness, that believe in the Holy Spirit. I think that's what my answer is. Being around other men not just men that that you know come out your box go around men that also that can teach you that you can receive from and you also um, you can give back to others and men that that you can walk with at the same time because a man builds his confidence also when he's teaching so it's good to be around those three stages of men yeah That's essentially what I was saying that you know you can never get the thing you don't desire so for you to have a mentor in your life, you must desire it first. There will be a desire that you want a change. You must desire that I don't want to live at this level again. You know, the prodigal son came to that point. Like the Bible says, and he came to himself and said, why am I here? I shall arise and I'll return back to my father. So that's a desire for a change. It's a desire for a change. So you cannot, you know, I mean, live your life doing the old and old things, the normal, usual, usual thing, and expect to see a change. You must desire it for that I want to change. The one that says, desire you that I want to change. I want to be a man that God wants me to be. I want to live a righteous life. I want to live a life of purpose. Life of purpose. Because, you see, like somebody said, any time the purpose of it is not understood, abuse becomes inevitable. So you are busy in that life because you don't understand, you don't know that there is a purpose for it. So there has to be a desire in you for that. I want to live a life of purpose and to be a man that God has made me to be. So, and when it comes to that, like Reverend Ori said, then you begin to look at somebody worth emulating. You want to look at somebody you can emulate because that's where it starts from. You know, everybody have role models. Why are they role models to you? I want to live the life they live. I want to be like that person. I like the way this, one, this man is, what this man is doing. I like the way he's living his life. 
So I want to be like him. So we have so many people who have made some celebrities their role models because they want to be like them. So as a believer, as a child of God, as a man, you know that God's purpose for life is to be like somebody who is above you, who is living a godly life, who is having fruit, bearing fruit. God used to say, you shall know the tree by their fruit. Bearing fruit, not just gift. You call that this person is bearing fruit. So you have to now connect yourself to the man to learn. So it's about emulating the person. Emulating, the, sorry, looking for somebody you can emulate, somebody you can follow, you know. So in this case, Reverend Abbey, is he going to tell us something? <laughs> we are rounding up now. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. He said, talking about, since a mentor is a wise and a trusted person, a wise and a trusted person, and also an advisor, wise. So, from your perspective, how do you know somebody is wise? A scriptural perspective. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible does say that we should seek wise counsel. Mm. Um, and that, I think, is the core of mentorship. Mm. Um, so, I've been looking at, looking at it from, with your human eyes, you, you probably would not be able to really determine who is wise and who is not wise. We're talking about godly wisdom here. So really the key is prayerful request to God, like prayerful preparation, really asking the Lord to show you um, who that wise person is that you should approach mm -hmm. for wise counsel. Um, and I think just to, um, you know, sort of maybe expand on what has already been said, I, I also wanted to, to speak to um, maybe single, single mothers out yes. there. Um, because, you know, there's, there are a number of different reasons why a father would not be around and, you know, why uh, a female might be bringing up children by herself. Um, as you said earlier, sir, the Bible does say that, you know, we should train up a child in the way he should go and when he's grown, he will not depart from it. And I really strongly believe that there's a core reason why God determined that there should be a father and a mother um, to train up the child. Because, you know, just looking at my family, I know, I mean, obviously we train our children together, but there's a way my husband will train and counsel our children, which would be different from the way I would train and counsel the children. So really the children need both. So for those, you know, people, single mothers out there who, you know, father's not around for whatever reason, it's again a case of prayerful request in terms of, you know, who is around me? Who is around? It could be a man of God, your, you know, your pastor. It could be someone else who could play that role for your children to provide that wise counsel. It's very essential. You know, a, a child needs that counsel from a father's perspective as well as from a mother's perspective. And, you know, if you look at it with just your human eyes, you won't get it right. You need to, to look at it from, well, you need to pray about it. You need to ask for the Lord to guide you and to direct you to that person who can provide that wise counsel. Praise God. That is a very, very important point, you know, that you just mentioned, you know. Important because every person needs to be mentored. So if you are a single mother and possibly the father of the, of the baby is not there at all, is not around you, is not coming at all, there are those who possibly their, their partners still come around to spend time with the child, you know, but in case you fall into a category of people who the man don't even show up at all, please, it's important that if you, will, if you are a, a member of any church, prayerfully look for somebody there, if not the main pastor, any pastor there that you believe has the godly character you want your children to imbibe and let the person play that role in your child's life. Every child needs to be mentored. Every child needs to be pointed to God. Every child needs to be given attention of you know, attention. Every child needs such an attention. Yeah, the child might not call him a father. It might be an uncle. It might be a pastor. But 
the person should be around the child to lead the child properly. You know, it's important. I like that point. Lord bless you for that point. So it's an advice to every young person listening who possibly falls into that category. Make sure that there is a father figure in your home as you are raising your children. So they will be raised in the fear of the Lord. They will be mentored. So they grow up loving God and even loving the father they never saw. For example, you have heard the testimony of Pastor Clement. He's now a friend to the father, even though they suffer a rejection, but he's now a friend to his father. Why? Because of the grace of God that he has, you know, been able to receive, you know. Glory be to God. We also know that, you know, in as much as we say all this, you know, true mentorship is done in love. When love is absent, there can be no mentorship. Because true mentorship requires patience. Requires patience. A trainer will be patient. A trainer cannot be patient if it's not done in love. That's why what we call training in homes those days actually aren't training. They are just assault and punishment. But they're not training. So you just committed wrong, they will lie you down and whack your bomb several times and, and drive you away. <laughs> Many a time you're not told what to do and how to do it correctly. Praise God. So training is born out of love. The Bible says, Father, do not be harsh with your children, but raise them up with admonition in the fear of the Lord. So that is training to be born, to be done in love. In love. So do you want to add to that? How do you see that? Because uh, you didn't see that love. <laughs> you grew up here in everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, that. Yeah, you kind of, you grew up here. I think you grew by Cain and, you know, you run. Well, no, it's true, sir. Uh, you do with love and you explain um, the reason why, you know, the action take, you know, took place in the, in the first place. And the same way, I'm now showing love and mentoring my son from, you know, the place that God, God is loving me from and also from the things I've seen not being done. So I know the impacts that it would have on my son if he's not followed in that manner. Um, and I, so therefore, yes, yeah, so whenever I'm disciplining my son, because um, I'm a bit of a strict, I'll go for me and my wife, I'm a strict one. Disciplinary. Yeah, I'm a disciplinary, yeah. Um, I'm very proud to wear that tag. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I make sure that once he's disciplined, I also explain to him the reason why and I take him back to that place and say, look, you've done something here and this is the consequence of that action and that's the ripple effect. So if you broke something, look, you broke something. Because you broke it, we can't use it here because that happened. So don't go here again. So therefore, it's done in love and it's corrected in love so that we can raise men who take the place of ownership and understand that you know, every action we take does have consequences behind it. And if we, if we are prepared to pay the price of that consequence, then you can walk in that path. But if you're not, then walk on God the path. Walk, on the, walk in the God the path on and righteous path that is before you. Yes, sir. So that's, that's what I would say. Yeah. Thank you so much. I want to appreciate everyone here on the platform for this wonderful nuggets. And I believe that those out there who are listening, you are blessed tonight by those wise counsels. Those wise counsels. You see, please get to understand the summary of it all. What we are saying here is every man is born with a purpose. What's the purpose? To be a mentor, a mentor to your offspring, a mentor to your generations, to be a mentor. A mentor has this assignment to instruct, to show the way, to show the way. So if you are going to show the way, like a leadership expert said, you must have gone the way, you must know the way, you must have gone the way yourself. That's why God said, the word that I'm teaching you must first of all be in your own heart. Then you are the same, in turn, take it to your children. So you must be mentored first before you can mentor others. Submit yourself to mentoring. Then you realize that others are going to submit to you, to your mentoring also. Because most of the problem we have, even in home, is that a husband is not submitted to the mentoring, mentorship of God, but he wants the wife to submit to his own mentorship, which becomes a problem, you know. So if you are mentored, then you can mentor others. Because what you don't have, you cannot give. You can only give what you have. So I want to encourage every man hearing me today to, that you must understand that God's purpose for your life 
is mentoring. That's why the topic for the day is mentor, mentoring the next generation. So it's a responsibility that you cannot delegate to anyone else. Your home will be mentored by you. Your children must know God through you. Your children must know how to behave through you. They say that good ethics, a good ethics start from home. From home. You remember that if a child in those days behave outside, what they will ask is that don't you have parents? They expect that you know upbringing should start from home, not school. Please don't give your responsibility to the school. They can't do it for you. The school aren't there to mentor your children. They are to teach them just not like biology, science. That was they are there to they, they, that was they go there to learn. Not ethics, not etiquette, not how to behave, not how to love God, not how to know who they are, that they are made in the image and the likeness of God. That is your responsibility. You are to do it. So I want to counsel you. Please, from today, spend time with your children as a man. Spend time with your children. Some of us who are prospective fathers to be, learn it today. Write it down and take note of it. File it away and use it when the time comes. You know, must make out time and, you know, with your children. Spend time with them. Take them. Read the Bible with them. Be in their life. If it is five minutes you have, make it a quality five minutes. Take them the way of the Lord. Nobody can do it but you. Be the pastor over your household. Take time to grow in God so you can, you know, now represent God in their lives. So spend time with them, showing them the world. Don't leave every all the fellowship in the house just for your wife alone it's good many a time women do it but once in the while be there to impact on the children and also as a mentor learn to bless your children speak good words into their life prophesy into their destiny that is watching them working their program that would mean by working their program prophesy into their destiny tell them what they are going to become speak positive words into their life keep seeing them with the eye of the word of God, not what they are doing. That is what I mean by training. Be patient with them. Be patient and lovingly correct them. Don't turn them away from, you know, accepting your mentoring. Because if you are harsh and you are negative, you will never see them. Be peaceful with them. Be loving to them. Spend good time with them. Quality time. Not the length, but the quality. And give them book assignment. Make sure they have an assignment to go home with or to go away with from every platform. Anytime I discuss with them, they leave with an assignment. Either to read certain portion of the Bible and then explain to you, you know, or to read certain book that will help their destiny. You know, make sure you are cultivating that training, schooling, educating, teaching, civilizing them. That's cultivating. So you are to play this role in their lives as a man. Man, that is what God expects you to do. If you do that, discover that our society will be so clean, so good. Because if every children from every household are good children, there will be no way what ones on the street. So we have a responsibility that we cannot throw away. Let's rise up therefore as men and honor God. Let's rise up therefore as men and what honor Jehovah. Let's make God proud. Let's show God that he has not failed in making us that we are the pride of his life, we shall be the joy of his creation. Let's bless God, let's, be, let's rise up and be the best by fulfilling God's purpose for our life. God bless you, Rickley. We love you so much from every one of us here. We love you. We are excited that you invited us into your home tonight. The Lord keep you, the Lord preserve you. You shall be a good mentor to your generation in Jesus' name. In case you have heard my voice there and you have not met with Christ, that's the foundation. That's the foundation of mentoring because he is, the, he is the mentor of mentors. Today, you want to allow Christ to come into your heart. Please just pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for the privilege of knowing you today. I open up my heart to you and I'm asking you to come into my heart, cleanse me from my sins and be my Lord and be my savior. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for loving me unconditionally. Thank you for dying on the cross that I will live. I'm grateful, I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord, because I know that I am born again from today in Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. And from every one of us here, I want to say 
we love you. God bless you. God bless you. Plus, give the land, give the Lord a round of applause for every person here who have been a blessing to you. Go ahead, go ahead and do that, do that. Let me see you clapping. 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 Clap, 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 clap. Bless God. Bless God for everyone on the platform. You have been a blessing to you. Glory be to God. The Lord bless you. Have a gracious time. See you in a fortnight time. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise